Jesus Christ. Good evening to everyone. Uh, welcome to St. Nicholas, our, our wonder-working saint and, and guest, a special guest this evening here. Uh, St. Nicholas comes to us all the way from uh, Asia Minor, uh, and uh, he looks remarkably well. I know he's got a long set of hair and a long, long white beard, um, but a big smile on his face and a warm heart, and he looks remarkably well for a man who's 1,800 years old. Uh, St. Well, almost 1,800 years old. St. Nicholas has a remarkable life, and many of us know St. Nicholas by another name. Anybody know which name is, is most commonly referred to? And I know you can't answer that, St. Nicholas. Santa Claus. Santa Claus! St. Nicholas and Santa Claus are one and the same. And you know, St. Nicholas is sitting right over here in the chair, right before his icon, and that icon of St. Nicholas is in every one of our Byzantine Catholic churches, because St. Nicholas has such an important and prominent place in our life, not just because of Christmas time, but because of all the things that St. Nicholas stood for, which are not seasonable, seasonal, but timeless. St. Nicholas was born of very wealthy parents. Maybe that's a, every young man's dream come true, but St. Nicholas took to heart the words of our Lord, seek first my kingship over you, my way of holiness, and all of these things will be given to you besides, and do not place your, your, your hope and your stock in, in worldly affairs, but on the very word of God. So living that, St. Nicholas sold and gave away nearly everything he had to help others. Uh, he was chosen to be, uh, first wanted to be a priest, chosen to be a bishop. There's a remarkable story about how St. Nicholas was chosen to be bishop, and it has to do with he was the first one in church praying on the day the older bishop was dying, and the older bishop made a prediction that whoever comes into the church, the very first one to come and pray will be my successor. And of course, it was St. Nicholas, a man of prayer. And prayer really begins with everything. That starts our whole act of charity. So let's be people of prayer on this St. Nicholas Day and every day. That's the first example that St. Nicholas teaches us, that everything starts with prayer. Right, St. Nicholas? Yes. Did you hear what he said? Yes. And St. Nicholas says all the prayers except the prayer to St. Nicholas. That sort of makes sense, right? So St. Nicholas, as a bishop and as a man of prayer, gave away his wealth and his fortune. There's one very, very famous story um, that has to do with something that we all receive to this day, and that's those little gold coins. Remember those gold coins that we all received? You know the story why? Or, or how about this? Let's go one, one step back a little bit further. Remember in your childhood? I remember when I was growing up, we used to have stockings, and in the, in the toe of the stocking, there would be an orange. Remember that? Or a piece of fruit, usually an orange. You know how the, all that got started? I'll tell you. St. <laughs> Nicholas knows, and St. Nicholas told me this story, and I'm going to share it with you. Uh, back in the day, as it were, fathers had to provide for their daughters in marriage. It's called a dowry. Maybe you've heard that word before, a dowry. But there was a poor man, a very, very poor man, who couldn't afford a dowry. And his daughters were in danger of being sold into slavery. Couldn't enjoy uh, the pleasures of marriage and, and motherhood and all of those things that every young person, young girl aspires to. St. Nicholas heard about this, but he also heard the words of our Lord written in Holy Scriptures. Keep your good deeds works of secret, and your father who sees in secret will repay you. So St. Nicholas very secretly took some of his own personal wealth little bag of gold and tossed it in the window of the father whose daughters needed the dowry. Now tradition tells us when St. Nicholas tossed this little bag of gold, it landed inside a stock or, or a shoe. And, and uh, that, I think, was probably the birth of the tradition of sometimes putting your shoes out. Remember doing that when you were kids? Putting your shoes out in front of the... We used to do that in the seminary, actually putting our shoes out, and St. Nicholas would fill the shoes with candy. You could put your shoes out, 
or, or you would simply then go to your stockings and you would find uh, an orange, or, or in St. Nicholas's case, you would put in there a bag of gold. But that's how these traditions got started. And we continue with these traditions to remind us of the good things that St. Nicholas had done. But St. Nicholas's good adventures did not stop there. One of the other things that St. Nicholas is known for is being a patron saint of, of many countries and many people, including sailors. I don't know if any of you have ever sailed before, or any of you are Navy veterans, but St. Nicholas was a saint, was a patron of sailors. As a matter of fact, I believe that the very first ship that, that came to America uh, had on its, I might be wrong about this, but I, I think there was on, on, on the bow of the ship an image of St. Nicholas. But there was certainly a devotion of St. Nicholas that was carried overseas to this new world. Because St. Nicholas, when he was a, when he was a young man, uh, and a Christian, a devout Christian, was oftentimes persecuted for his faith, like many of the saints were. And he had to go sometimes into exile into hiding. Then when he returned back to his ministry, on one occasion, there was a, a storm at sea that rocked the ship in which he was riding, and all the sailors, these seasoned men of the sea, became so terrified that St. Nicholas, remember this St. Nicholas? Vividly, he says, St. Nicholas went in the midst of the storm and prayed before everybody else. And what do you think happened? The storm abated, the seas got calm, just like our Lord did in the Bible. Because St. Nicholas lived the words of the Lord. And the sailors and everyone on the ship was struck with amazement. And these are only some of the wonder-working things that St. Nicholas has done in his life. But here's the thing to remember, friends. St. Nicholas is with us today because his spirit is still very much alive, not only in the good works that we do, but in, through himself as well. St. Nicholas still gives us gifts. As a matter of fact, as we're leaving the church today, there's a couple of gifts that St. Nicholas would like to present to you. One is a gold coin to be mindful and remember that we are to continue those acts of charity. And maybe it's the little sweetness of the gold coins and we're unwrapping the gold foil and munching on the chocolate. Maybe we'll remember to share that sweetness through a good deed with somebody else during this season. And really every day. St. Nicholas also has a prayer card for you to remind you, like St. Nicholas, to be persons of prayer. Prayer is our most powerful tool, and it changes everything. And one other thing that St. Nicholas has, and it's so special, it's a part of himself. Out of the tomb where St. Nicholas is buried, even to this day, there flows an oil. And this oil is said to have the ability to bless and to heal us. We have some of this oil this evening. And I'll, I'll put some of this oil in the anointing oil that each one of us will be blessed with as we're leaving the church for Mirovania. And, and so we have three wonderful blessings of St. Nicholas by way of example, by way of reminder, and by way of healing and blessing. And pray God through St. Nicholas's prayers that certain blessings and even the best kind, the unexpected blessings will come our way. And let's all remember to share those blessings with others. Glory to Jesus Christ. Glory forever. Always